Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the Yesu FT450D. I know that these are discontinued. That was back in 2018. Um, but I wouldn't be doing this uh, little talk if, uh, if it wasn't available. But you can go on eBay, you can go all other places. And there's always a couple for sale to choose from. And they hold up really well. So no problem buying a used one. Just try to get a mint one or one that hasn't been beat up. And um, you, you'll love the radio. So stick around and I'll tell you all about it. Let's go. November 1, United Hotel Foxtrot. So it's 2023 and spring is, is uh, just around the corner and I want to get outside and do more ham radio. Now the FT891 is a great radio to do that, um, but the menu is tedious at best. It's a fantastic radio, I highly recommend it, but it's great for throwing a backpack, putting a portable box, you know, you're going to go hiking and you need to go far away from the vehicle. But if you're just going to go uh, to do uh, parks in the air or a picnic bench, if you want to just uh, get out on your deck or in the yard, you want to go just get outside the house. If you look on eHam, it has like like 167 reviews with an aggregate score of 4.5. That's one of the highest I've seen on any transceiver to have a 4.5 on EHAM. So um, it, there's no disputing it's uh, rugged and reliable and well liked by so many people. So let's go over some of the specs first. It's 8.8 .8 pounds, very carryable, uh, carryable compared to the 13 pound radio, I think, something like that, that my 7200 is. Um, the receive is an incredible 30 kilohertz low. That's way below the AM band. And so anybody who's in, uh, into the extremely low uh, bands that ham radio, especially experimental ham radio is into, this will receive that all the way down to 30 kilohertz and all the way up to 56, um, 60, 56 megahertz. That it has an all metal construction besides the aluminum interior you know, the top cover bottom cover everything about the radio including the back is all steel the back is aluminum i believe like the uh, the entire cast inside the front everything is aluminum and then steel on the outside which is um which is excellent now if you're wondering the difference between the 450 and the 450d uh, that this one is the 450d made standard the antenna tuner it used to be that the, when the ft450 first came out you can get an optional upgrade called the 450at and that one has the tuner but it doesn't have the other upgrades that the 450d has so what the 450d added was those uh, extra filters for cw i think it only had 500 and 2.4 so it added the 300 filter it also added lighted buttons. The other one didn't have lit buttons. You can't see it here in this well lit uh, room, but if it was dark, you'll see that all these buttons are lit up. It's a sight to see at nighttime. It's gorgeous. You, you can look at them, Google images, do um, FT450, and you'll see it at night that these are all glowing. It's amazing. And uh, so that was the other upgrade on the D. Also, the knobs are more conventional than the other knobs were. They work better, uh, feel better, I guess. They got rid of the dimple and they put a, a better uh, thing to hold on to on the uh, 450, on the D model. And there's one or two other internal tweaks that they made, maybe to the roofing filter, I can't remember. Um, but try to get the D if you can, because you're gonna get that tuner. Um, you're gonna get the, the lit buttons, which to me is a big deal. Um, sometimes at night I keep it really uh, the light low in here uh, in my shack and it's really easy because you can read everything with those lit buttons just like on a handheld it works the same way and it's fantastic the other thing they added too, believe it or not the original did not have feet or a bail that's the other downside um, so I put uh, I put a I have a block of wood here I have on my radios because I'm very tall so they're not quite high enough for me any radio so i always put the wood however this one has feet on the bottom believe it or not the original didn't even have feet bail nothing so it just sat flat on a table so that's another upgrade in the d it has the feet on there uh so yeah they try to get the d model but if you get the other older one for a really good price like a really crazy low price or something then there's nothing wrong with the original too it's a fantastic radio so I'm going to tell you all the reasons why I think this is one of the best radios just to grab and go and have fun outside. 
And of course it makes an excellent base station radio as well because it has so many knobs and buttons that you don't have to go into a lot of the menus. It makes it very convenient for a home. It's a good size. It's not too big or small. And in a pinch it could be used as a contesting radio if you do contesting in addition to a lot of other activities. With all the capabilities that the radio has on it, it's perfect for a base station, very good display. And if you have uh, challenging antennas like uh, NFEDs or half-wave NFEDs, um, other multi-band um, other multi-band radios like off-center fed dipoles you can just add an, ex an external tuner here and this interfaces very well with all different types of tuners so there's no problem there getting you know 10 to 1 um, a tuner to add to it and so yeah just a great base station radio too or your only HF radio since it does so many things and so many features are, that are in this radio and it was quite expensive when it came out but now on the secondary market you can get it for around 600 bucks or so for a really nice radio with these features in it you're going to be surprised of what this little box has in there so first off it has an automatic antenna tuner built in so 8.8 .8 pounds and you can see the size of it is not that large of a radio but it has a lot of buttons and a lot of knobs on here so you don't have to go through a lot of menus usually to set and forget ones and there is a button here that's programmable so that you can put whatever um, feature and there's like 40 different things you could put on that button for instance right now if you look over here when I push it if, you, if I hit the actually right there see if you hold it down 14.2 volts I have the voltage there now I might put the RF power there because there's no other uh, direct access except through the menu on the RF power so I might but when you go portable and you want to see the condition of your battery, you can just push that button and say it's 14.2 volts. So that's pretty fantastic. That's one of the great features about the radio. Um, the 891 struggles with that. You, you, only when you turn the radio on. On the 891, can you see that happening? So the built-in antenna tuner is a 3 to 1, not a 10 to 1 like you have in external antenna tuners. And that's the problem with my 70, 7200 here, uh, right next to it. Let's see if I can swing over and take a look at the at the 7200 right there fantastic radio i love this radio and i take it out sometimes i got the handle on there um, but the problem with that is that um, i often need an antenna tuner because when you're running portable sometimes you just can't get that swr you know below a certain amount below two two and a half 1.9 even and a lot of people don't realize that yesu radios every one that i've had and i've had a lot of yesu transceivers all of them will start cutting back the power above 1.1 uh, 1 to 1.5 SWR. And that's not very high when it starts cutting back the power. So a lot of people think they're putting out 100 watts when they're putting out 60 watts because they got 2.2 maybe, or maybe they're doing digital and then they're doing voice at other ends of the band and it's gonna creep up and they think that's good enough, but really the, the power is gonna be cutting back. And if you're running on battery power, that's a lot of wasted uh, power that you really wanna to go to the antenna. So I highly recommend and then some kind of antenna tuner off if we're going portable at least you have the option to turn it on this one has it built in it's a three to one perfect for touching up a band you know to get it when I um, use the antenna tuner here uh, on my NFED at home it's the only internal antenna tuner that will turn up that antenna that's why I have external antenna tuners on all my radios here um, my 703 my 7300 ICOM none of them can tune up any bands on my 52 foot end fed with 9 to 1 ballot on it. This one does. This one tunes it up on three bands, I think 20, 10, the ones I use the most, um, but it won't tune up in 40. Uh, but it'll, it'll do 20, 10, and 17 meters, I think. One of the other bands I don't use that much, it'll tune up as well, which is pretty amazing. So I think it's much better, like other people have said, much better than 3 to 1. So the antenna tuner is fantastic. It's really quick. Um, here, let's run it right now. Um, I turn the gain all the way up because you can hear a little bit of hiss. Even when the volume's off, you can hear a little bit of hiss from the speakers. So all I do, and that's one of the complaints, all I do is go like this and turn um, the the RF gain all the way off, and then you don't hear anything out of the out of the speaker. But I just want to make sure no one's on. Let's find a clear place. Don't tune up your tuner if, if people are talking. This looks this looks free. Let's turn this down. So you just hold down the tuner button.
There you go. What was that? Four or five seconds? Boom. It's done. And it got one to one. You can take a look at the SWR just before it stops. And it'll be and it'll be one to one. Or you can talk into it and you can see that it works. So very fast, very efficient. Highly recommend the internal tuner on here. It's fantastic. So not a lot of radios have that. The A91 doesn't have it. My 7200 doesn't have it. A lot of Porter radios don't uh, have uh, in, internal antenna tuners in, in it, especially portable type or smaller type radios. So internal uh, antenna tuner is a big deal for me and that's in here already. Another thing that's in here that is, I'm gonna go over all the things that cost more money on other radios that's built into this radio. Um, IF DSP, this one that has IF DSP instead of audio. So what that means is you don't have to buy extra filters. Unlike the um, the venerable 897, 857, and Yesu 818, all of those radios are fantastic. Um, but if you want other filter options, like almost the required, you know, 300 or 500 hertz filter instead of 2.4 built into all those radios, usually it's like a 2.7 Murata or something. Not that great for CWs. You have to buy a filter. And filters for any radio, since they're well, the ceramic filters or something, they're normally Collins. They're 150 to 200 bucks each. And if you want a single sideband one as well, you're looking at another 300. This this one has um, all those filters built in. It's IF, and so on CW you've got the 300 and the 500 and a 2.4, uh, which is you know two narrows and a wide. So if you're searching around for CW, use the 2.4, then you can knock it down to 500, whatever you like listening to. Um, on, on single sideband, it's 1.8, 2.4, and 3. And those three are normally what people buy to add to their uh, radio. This way they have the option of you know 1.8 in contest, and you want to rag to or something, and you want to hear nicer audio, you could put in the 2.4, uh, sometimes or 2.8, or 3. Um, so these are built in, so you don't have to pay any extra money for that. Another thing that's built into this radio is the uh, temperature controlled crystal oscillator or the TCXO. And those are, you know, normally about a hundred bucks, something like that, plus or minus to add to your radio. This one has that built in also. Many of the ones you buy um, are 0.5 these days. And this is an older radio and they brought it down to one. So it has a, which is really good. And that's good enough for digital. So any kind of digital you want to do um, is going to be really stable with the temperature controlled crystal oscillator that's in here, the one part per million. Um, if a radio doesn't have a, um, a TCXO in it, it's normally four parts per million, five, six, something like that. So one is a great improvement and that's built in here as well. So that's another uh, money savings that's built into this uh, that's built into this radio. Another thing that's here and you don't find on most radios is a voice announcer. So for those sight impaired individuals that end up buying a uh, voice announcer and it's good to have for anybody else and it'll read off the frequency, the mode, and a couple other things you could turn on also the signal um, meter on how you know S7 or something like you could turn that on as well. Um, but that's built into here. You're going to save money on there and for it's ready to go for the sight impaired uh, on that. It, it's just a voice announcer. Let's see if it'll do it now. You hit F and you hit this button here. See, so that's that's kind of cool. That's built in. That's what you're getting with this as well. Um, let's see what else. Oh, this has a, um, a, a beacon feature. Oh, roofing filter. Before I leave the filters, it also has a really good four pole, ten megahertz or nine megahertz uh, roofing filter. The radio also has a microphone equalizer. Um, it's not totally configurable like some radios. Uh, usually there's no equalizer in it, but this one has a 10 presets. So what you can do is you can talk through the microphone to a nearby radio and listen to it, or you can use the monitor function and listen to it coming out of the speaker, and you can just see what sounds best to you. Or you can do on-air tests with someone else listening at the other end. That's a lot more difficult to get a good answer because people are subjective on what they're hearing. And also with QRM and QRN and you know static and all sorts of interference, you're not gonna get consistent from one setting to the next. Uh, it's better to hear it yourself. So that's how I do it, and I picked um, the one that sounds best with my voice. Another thing also is this microphone, the MH31. A lot of people complain about the microphone. It's a good microphone, but it's not excellent. 
Some people think the earlier 67 series, the older ones, were better, and other people dispute that. So it's kind of a subjective thing, but there's no doubt that if you're going to use this as a base radio, I highly recommend the desk mic, like the um, MD100 or the 200 or one of the other higher end or HIO, whatever you want to use. That's really what you should get um, because these are just meant to be uh, portable and communications grade. So for what it is, it's a, it's a good microphone. It doesn't have DTMF. You don't need all that, uh, but it does have down, fast, and up, and this the, the fast will turn the dials so it rotates faster and so forth. Uh, really good feel, really rugged microphone, and a good uh, click on the push button here. You can tell it's very ruggedly made. Also on the back, I don't know if you can see it. There it is. See that switch? That switch has one and two. It's like a tone control. And they say, oh, always use two or always use one. Just uh, talk through it and listen yourself to the voice and see what which one your voice sounds best on. So between that, and the equalizer, you can have a pretty decent audio coming out of this microphone and this radio, and then you're all set to go and you won't have to do it anymore. It'll be set for your voice. It also has IF DSP, as I mentioned, and it also has um, digital noise reduction or, or DNR. It has a preamp and attenuator. It has IF shift, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. Uh, which is useful for getting rid of uh, nearby overwhelming signals like in a contest or just if you're having a ride you and somebody starts creeping up uh, next to you. It has a manual notch filter. I don't think there's an auto notch filter in here, just a manual, but it works very well and you can just um, notch out something if it's causing um, all kind of problems. It has... Uh, DSP Vox, so you, they're using a DSP circuit for the, the Vox control. Oh, it also has voice memories. It has two 10 second voice memories. So if you're contesting or doing other things, or if you're doing pot or soda and you, you keep saying your call sign and, and where you are, you just, all you have to do is uh, hit a button for that and it'll do that for you to save your voice a bit from doing that for, you know, in case you're doing it for uh, hours on end. It has CW zero beating, so if you're you can't quite tune in onto a CW signal, you want to do it faster. Just hit the zero beat function, and it'll tune that in for you. The it has a four to sixty word per minute hear electronic hear built in. Most radios do, but it, it has that good four to sixty word per minute one. It also has a CW training feature. That's something you're not going to find in any other radios that I found, except for Yesu radios, and they even put it on their handhelds. Uh, a lot of their handhelds have, have that feature, which is pretty cool, and it's fun. And, and if you're training, it's a random generator. I think you could pick numbers or alphabet something, and it'll do that. It'll do that for you. Now, here's another feature I only see in Yaesu radios, and, and it has it on um, a lot of their HF radios, and that's the beacon feature. So this can actually be a beacon transmitter. You know, you pick your band and you would record your CW. I think it does the the single side band for the voice announcement as well. I'm not sure, but it definitely does a CW. So this way, if you're trying to study propagation and you have a network of people or you just want to add yourself to the Beacon network for 10 meters especially or sometimes 6 meters, then this has that feature in it. You just hook it to an antenna and a battery or your mains and it'll beacon away whatever you want it to say and whatever frequency you want it to beacon that signal. Pretty cool. Yeah, I, I've never tried that. Well, I've tried it, but I've never turned it on as an actual network um, radio. Um, it has a dedicated um, ampli linear amplifier jack in the back and a separate tuner jack and a separate data jack. So you don't have to like combine any of them or use them for one thing or anything like that. You're going to have dedicated jacks in the back for everything. Incredible structure inside. The entire unit, just like the ICOM 718, that budget radio or the entry level radio has a similar die cast aluminum structure. The entire insides are a big block of aluminum carved out, I mean cast. Um, and then everything applied to uh, um, the top side and the bottom side, and the heat sinks and everything. It's just pretty amazing how rugged it, it is. It's a very rugged, uh, rugged radio. The fan is large. It's the size of, uh, what is it, three and a half inch or whatever that a computer fan is. And the fan is on all the time. One of the complaints, oh, it has a loud fan always on. You can't shut it off. And that's true, but it is not loud. It's on right now. 
I don't know if you can hear it, but you can barely, I have to really strain to hear it. And then what happens is when you're transmitting, um, and then it'll go faster. And then the, the hotter it gets, it goes faster and faster. Um, they keep it so no one has, no one that I've read or on YouTube have ever complained that the radio is loud. Uh, the fan is loud. It just is a very quiet fan. And of course, if you want super quiet, you can buy a high-end fan they sell these days to, just to throw it on the back there. You know, take this one and swap it out and you'd have even quieter. But I was going to do that, but it is so quiet. There's no way. This thing is like an amazing quiet fan on there. So I just wanted to bring up that issue. Um, the speaker is a loud speaker uh, audio, 2.2 watts. So that's pretty decent for the audio uh, what is going to the speaker um, available there's not a lot of things available because everything's built in <laughs> so uh, but you can still get a mobile bracket for it in case you want to put in a portable box or put in an RV or a vehicle or something the, mo the mobile bracket is available for a reasonable price I think you can still get them and it's the same bracket used by other radios that Yesu makes um, also uh, the handles available and I just grabbed one I just grabbed the handle um, off of one of the ham radio suppliers. Some of them still have some handles left. 15 bucks, you can't go wrong. And it has metal feet already built into the side. One of the main reasons I wanted to get this radio back again is because unlike like my 7200, unlike the uh, 891, unlike a lot of radios, there are dedicated buttons for everything, especially since there's two purposes sometimes on these buttons. Um, but everything's accessible really easy. And on the screen here, uh, everything is visible uh, very easily. And if you turn the brightness up, you're going to see all the things that aren't lit up uh, that are possible. So let me hit the uh, the dim here. Let's turn that up. Oop, this one right here. This is the multi knob here. So if I turn up all the way, I don't know if you can see all the things that's under here now. AMF from all the modes. You can see that, which is pretty cool. You could really see that. You either love or hate this screen. A lot of people love it. I love it. Some people don't like it. I don't know why, but everything is big and easy to read. People that are sight impaired also who can still see some, this is going to be really visible for them. You can make it really bright. Um, let me turn that down again. So it doesn't, but anyway, yeah, you can see all those things behind there, which is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. All right, let me leave it on maybe four right now. Um, so getting back to um, what's visual, for instance, the RF filter shows a little filter thing uh, off on, off on the antenna. There's actually a picture of an antenna. They put pictures on here wherever, wherever they can. So uh, the S, the meter here is very easy to read and it's uh, very accurate. It kind of under reports a little bit compared to other radios. Um, the SWR, uh, ALC and power are options here when you transmit. So when you're receiving, you always got the uh, S signal and then you could just uh, hit the little meter thing here. As you can see, it's now power and then ALC and SWR. I often like to keep SWR this way. If there's a problem with antenna, you know, you don't want to have a problem with the finals, even though very robust finals on this radio. So this DSP button here will go through the different options that you have on different DSP settings. You got the contour, notch, DNR, digital noise reduction, and the filter widths. And then shift is there, and that's separate, has its own knob, and you can shift the entire uh, bandpass so that you know you could move offending signals out of the way, and, and that's one more thing you could put in your little bag of tricks to get that signal in really well. So the contour, um, each the contour you just push the button like all the rest, and it brings up two different contour settings. Then you can go across and you can enhance or um, unenhance different uh, frequencies. So here we go like this. And this is going to enhance those things. And then this one here is going to bring down that part of the signal. So it works. I don't use it a lot, but it's there in case, uh, in case you want it. You hit the DSP again, it goes down to notch. Now here's a manual notch filter. I don't, like I said, I don't think it has an auto notch filter. I think it's a manual one. You know, I thought there was something wrong at first. I forgot that you gotta keep turning it and turning it and that one moves more slowly because even though it's not showing you, every little click here is having an effect and getting closer so you could really notch out that, that offending signal. Whether somebody's tuning up or just getting really close and you can't hear your person anymore, then you can just um, kind of notch them out. All right, so next we have the digital noise reduction. 
Again, you just push it on, it activates it, and you can go from low level and more constrictive on the noise as you go up. And of course, it restricts that voice sound a little bit, um, but you can find a happy medium. Four or five works really well for me. You leave that on. You push the DSP again, we go to the width, and I went over that already. You get the 300 on CW, 500, and 2.4. And then on single sideband like we are right now, you're gonna get 1.8, 2.4, and three. And then go like this, and then the multi knob is used for other things now. This is when you have the button on fast, it'll go like this. And if you take the fast off, and then it's gonna go two and a half. Depends on what mode you're on, they're different. In the same way with here, here it's gonna, this is what I normally do, you don't see me doing this a million, like if you wanna go around, I'm not doing this a million times, you know, you don't wanna do that. Throw it on fast and you can go slow and you can still hear when a signal pops up. And it works, it works really well. Um, on AM, it automatically jumps to 10 kilohertz, but you could change that in the settings. A lot of these things you could change in the settings. I didn't go over. There's so much to the radio, I can't go over everything in this one video. Another thing I didn't mention, it has FM. So if you have 10 meter and 6 meter repeaters nearby, or during a, a band opening, you could reach far away repeaters. This is a repeater capable radio. It has a toning code and, and squelch. You could turn this knob into squelch instead of, instead of the RF gain. Um, so it has uh, the encode, it has all those things that you would need for a repeater. So it's a repeater functional radio uh, as well. And there's so many other things I'm not gonna go over the buttons, that's for um, another video, or you, there's tons out there, you know, going through everything on the radio. Just did a couple ad hoc contacts. Uh, one of them was to South Carolina, somebody uh, volunteering for a W1AW, stroke four. And we're gonna hear that. And then uh, after that, we'll hear, um, I was trying to get a DX station and one was coming in on 10 meters. So I made uh, a quick uh, QSO with someone in Eastern Czech Republic. This is Whiskey One, Alpha Whiskey, W1 Alpha Whiskey calling CQ for VOGA, volunteers on the air and listening. This is November One United Hotel Foxtrot. November 1, November 1, United Hotel Foxtrot. November 1, United Hotel Foxtrot. Thank you, 5-9. Uh, you are 5-4, five, 5-4 four, five, four here in Maine. Uh, Augusta, Maine, Central Maine, Mike Echo. Thanks a lot for Central Maine. I hope you're having a great day up there. The weather's not too bad. 7-3 and good luck. 7-3, good luck to you from N1 UHF. Take care. 7-3, this is Whiskey 1, Alpha Whiskey. Ontario Kilo 2, Sugar Alpha Italy. CQ and Lisbon. November 1, United Hotel Foxtrot. November 1, United Hotel Foxtrot. Ontario Kilo to Sugar Alpha Italy. Good afternoon, thanks for the calling. Your report 5 and 8, 58. My name is Henrik. Hotel Echo November Radio Yankee Kilo. Located Northeastern Park, Czech Republic. November 1, United Hotel Foxtrot. Okay, two sugar alpha Italy. Oscar Kilo 2, Sierra Alpha Indigo from November 1, United Hotel Foxtrot, QSL and everything. And I am, my name is Ed Echo Delta, and I am in central Maine of the United States. And you are 5757 for your signal report. Roger, Roger, Ed, thanks for the 5 and 7. You report 5 and 8. I'm using 1KW and 4LMS Monobit Yagi, over. Yeah, Roger, Roger, yeah, nice setup. Um, I am on a NFED, 52 foot NFED, not too high. And I'm only putting out 85 whiskey, 85 watts, over. Roger, Roger, very good working, your uh, NFED and uh, Thanks for the contact, 73 Edward. N1 United Hotel Florida. Okay, two sugar, I'll find you. Bye bye, Edward.
So have a great day. Nice talking to you. N1 UHF in Unclear. All right, as you can see, a very decent sounding radio, very capable of uh, DX with no problem. As a matter of fact, um, I think it was 10 to 15 years ago, one of the most desirable radios to take on the expeditions, the expeditions was this radio here, because everything I just mentioned and more, um, but the small form factor, rugged, humid, uh, hot, cold, whatever, humid climates, it was working really well. These days, 7300, they're bringing bigger radios. And a lot of times, ICOM gives them the radios. So anybody who's on their own budget and you have to pay for plane fare and hotels and everything that a the expedition or a single person the expedition who's doing it on their own, they don't have a lot of money. It costs an enormous amount of money to do these and then get on a boat to go to some island or whatever they're doing. So this radio here was very reasonable cost. So that's why um, it was one of the main radios that I, I would often see on the expedition. So it's a proven uh, the expedition radio that they're doing, you know, 20,000 QSOs in a weekend with this radio. So uh, no um, no issues with reliability. Or, um, so I should wrap this up. Uh, just again, a fantastic radio, uh, one that is rugged and reliable, and it's just great for taking outdoors. I can't wait to get outside and use this thing this year, which I didn't do with my original radio. I was using a 703. So now this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm so glad I got this radio. No regrets. I got it for a good price, mint condition. And if you want one like this, just search it out and you can have one as well. Highly recommend the FT450D. Please like and subscribe if you like the video, and we'll catch you next time here on Ham Radio Comms. Take care.